Okay, here we go. 1 Kings 6, 7. It says, And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither. So there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in the building. I want to read it one more time. You ready? And the house, come on, say it with me really loud. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in the building, right? So, so it was really, really made to fit. Come on, say it with me. Made to fit, right? Uh, let, let's say it another way. Made for the, its exact purpose. Come on. It was, the stone was made for its exact purpose. It had a place very specifically for it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, we give you this moment. We ask that you open our eyes, our ears, our heart, and especially our mind, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, you ever heard this, uh, uh, this, this saying? Measure, measure twice uh, and cut once. You ever heard that? Have you ever built, has anybody ever built anything? You ever built anything? Like you, you start building stuff and you got to get one of these tape measures. And you know what? The, 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 so some people don't even know, they don't even know they got these big marks and then they got the little bitty marks and then they got the little itty bitty marks, right? And so you got you to gotta know what the, the marks mean, right? To get the measurement right, okay? Uh, the, some people say it like this. They say, trust me, I'm a professional and I have a tape, right? <laughs> but but somebody, somebody also ought to say that if they go to church long enough, they ought to say, trust me, I've got the word, amen? I've got the word. So I got the answer right here, amen? Say it with me. Say, I got the answer right here. Uh, all right? And so often we, uh, I've said this many times too, I've said, uh, the image that you behold is the image you will become. So if you, if you look at people, you might look a little bit like people, okay? If you follow the people. Uh, if you follow the principle, you can get the benefit of the principle. But if we follow Jesus, amen, we're going to get the benefit of looking like Jesus to those around us, amen? And so, so our hearts are always perceiving or being perceived, right? Uh, say, just say this with me. Say, I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. So you, you are building a house, amen? This verse is talking about Solomon building the temple, a house for God. That's what this verse is talking about. It's talking about Solomon building a house. Uh, 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 Solomon was the son of David. Do you remember David? David was the king uh, uh, of Israel. Samuel anointed him. Uh, the second king, the first king was Saul. The second king was David. And David got anointed, but David had to run around for his life for quite a few years before he got to really receive the promise of being king. Uh, sometimes when we have the promise, amen, we don't always see it manifest immediately, okay, in our life, amen? We have, to, we have to be willing sometimes to trust by faith that God is taking us somewhere else, amen? And, and so uh, David, in 2 Samuel 7, uh, finds himself at rest from war, and he's walking around his house, and his heart says, he says in his heart, he says, uh, I'm in this house, but my God is still sleeping in a tent, right? He's still got a tent. And so he, he purposes in his heart to build the house of the Lord. He purposes in his heart. And so, uh, uh, but, but in 2 Samuel 7, uh, he says to Nathan, he says, I want to build a house for the Lord. And Nathan says, go ahead and do all that is in thine heart, okay? And, and so, so Nathan uh, goes home that night, and he, he goes to sleep, and the Lord speaks to him in a dream and says, go back and tell David, no. Amen? So, so did you know sometimes God says no? Hallelujah. 
hearts. And the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord anyway. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes we have stuff in our heart that God is never going to let you do. Amen? Come on now. God, is God God or not? <laughs> is, he, is he really on the throne or, or not? Amen? We got to get to that place right where we trust God even when he says no. Amen? Amen? And so, so, uh, it, so David had a heart for, God, for, for the building of the temple, but God said no, right? Sometimes, sometimes uh, even if we're shouting, uh, just, just shout, shout it out with me right now. Just say no. I mean, like you got a kid or something, you know, that's doing something wrong and, you know, or, or you know, you like you got a dog, you know, anybody ever had a dog? You ever notice that when you have a dog, something just comes out of you that's not really there before that? It's like, you get angry, you, you say, say things to the dog that you would never say to anybody else. And so just say it like that. Say, say no. no. Say, say it like a little, that's really kind of, that's, it's kind of one of them no's like you're saying, do you really want a donor or not? No. No. <laughs> say no. Say, say it loud. Say No. No. Okay, so this, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel good to say no? <laughs> sometimes I think, especially me, uh, I, I need to learn to say no. Because sometimes I say yes too much, right? And then I don't get no sleep at all and stuff, stuff goes on. And, and I got no time for the important things in my life. Amen? So I need to learn to say no better, right? So, 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 sometimes we want to do the thing that God says no to, and we continue to try to do the, do the thing that God said no to over and over and over and over and over. And that, that's what happens in our life. So, so uh, in, Psalms, in Psalms 22, verse 3, uh, David writes, he says, he says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. See, see, we got to get to a place where our God is so big, is so big, uh, like, like this church is, is too small for God, amen? It's too small. God can't come and put all of himself in this little building. Come on now. He can't come uh, and put it, all of himself in here. He's bigger than this building. Come on now. This, this room, this room is 40 feet wide and about 60 foot long, okay? It's too small for God, amen? Amen? But it's, it's big enough for us right now in the moment, right? We've got enough air, got enough air, got enough I got enough uh, elbow room, right? I got some space here, but, but my body is too small for God. Come on now. My body is too small for God. This, this gives me hope so for some of the troubles I go through. My troubles... Are, I, I ain't but a small thing for God, amen? It ain't but a small thing for God to, to come and do something in me, amen? Uh, my mind, come on now, is too small for God. Come on now, my mind, you can say that, amen. Uh, amen, Pastor Evan. <laughs> as smart as you are, come on. Come on, say it. As smart as you are, Pastor Evan. You dumb. <laughs> come on ahead, you can say it. Go ahead. So you can say, you dumb, because God is way smarter, amen? It's true, it's true, right? It's, it, he's way smarter, uh, uh, but he dwells in my praise. Come on now. God, God dwells in my praise, amen? Come on, say it with me. God dwells, God dwells. in my praise, amen? He, he, he's, too, he's too big for my body, but he dwells in my praise, amen? He, he's, too, he's too big for this room, but he, he dwells in my praise, amen? He dwells in my praise, so I gotta, I gotta give him my worship, amen? And my worship. Turn to your neighbor and just tell him, say, my worship about to get loud. Come on, tell him. Come on, tell him. Come on, tell him, really, tell him. You know, my worship about to get louder, amen? I, if you understand that when you praise God, the presence of God comes, if you understand when you lift your hands that you're giving glory to God, that's where the presence of God dwells. If you want to change, you've got to get into the presence of God. Amen? And the way we do that is when we begin to worship Him instead of everything else. Oh, God. Amen? Whoo! The earth. The earth is just a footstool for my God. Come on. 
the earth. Come on, say it with me. The earth is just his footstool. Woo. It says foot. I don't think it says feet stool. <laughs> Come on now. God is big. Say it with me. God is big. Better. No. In 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 22, uh, there's this discourse. David is getting ready to die, and he's talking to his son Solomon. His son Solomon. And he's talking to him, and he says, he says, uh, he said, now behold, I, I like this, word. it's verse, uh, uh, verse 14, uh, chapter 22, verse 14. I, 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 don't, I like to write in my Bible. Do you like to write in your Bible? So I write in my Bible, so I highlight these words. Behold, uh. trouble, and prepared. I highlight those three words, those three things, right? So now behold, in my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord. A hundred, let's read what he said. What did, what did David prepare? A hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and that, that thou mayest add thereto. Moreover, there are workmen with thee, uh, with thee in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber and all manner of cunning, and, and men of every manner of work, of the gold of the, and the silver and the brass and the iron. There is no number. Arise therefore and be doing... Can I say it again? Arise, therefore, and be doing. Arise, therefore, and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. Say, say that with me. Say, say, be doing. Be doing. Be doing. David prepared $238 billion worth of gold in today's value. $238 billion. Well, what was in David's heart? Let me, let me ask a question. What was in David's heart? He prepared $238 billion of gold. What was in David's heart? David's heart was to build the temple. You ever heard the statement, put your money where your mouth is? Have you ever heard that? See, this is, a, this is, an, a, this is an encouragement to those of us who ought to give a tithe, but we don't. Come on now. When we don't give our tithe, we're withholding from God. Amen? Actually, we're showing God what's in our heart. That's what we're really doing. God wants, where does God live? He, he, he sent, in Romans 10, 10, it says, it says, with the heart, we believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made. Don't say one thing and do another. Amen? Come on now. And so we got to get to a place, right? Oh, oh, I didn't even get to the best part. Silver? 660 billion, that's my calculations. I might be off a little bit. You can Google me all you want. I don't know. But that's like when you add it all together, it's close to a trillion dollars. And so it's a, that's a lot of money. Come on now, that's some change. Like he was making it rain up in there for, for the house of the Lord. He was saying, God is bigger than all my, my everything. Else. My legacy is to build the house of the Lord through my son. Amen. I don't, I, I don't get to do it, but I get to give it to somebody else who will. Amen? But on, on the way there, amen? On the way there, I'm going to make preparation. Amen? That's what David did. That was his heart. That was his heart. Whoo! Amen? You know, the, the temple was 90 feet long, 30 feet wide, and about 45 foot tall. That was the temple. So, 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 30 feet longer than this room. <laughs> Come on now, it wasn't that much bigger than this place here. Amen? Just say it wasn't that much bigger. It wasn't that much bigger. It was pretty small. And, and, and you know, it took, it, took, uh, it took seven years and six months to build it. Seven years and six months to build it, to finish it, okay? Uh, it, it was bigger than you know. Amen. Yes. It took, it, it took uh, small stones. They weighed somewhere between two and five tons. It took big stones. The large stones weighed 570 tons. 
if you take the, the, the size of the big stone, it was like 42 feet, like as wide as this room. It was 15 uh, feet, uh, one inch uh, across, and 10 feet, 10 tall. One stone. One stone. 570 tons. It was big. Say it with me. Say it was big. It's big. It was big. It's bigger than, uh, I don't know, see the 10 feet, I'm 6 feet, and this is 4. So probably brought from the floor up was the, was the height of the stone, right? About as wide as this room and about, about, about as deep as this stage. Come on, that's one stone. 570 tons. Think about that. I hate. They set the stone. They didn't put no mo mortar. Come on. No mortar, no grout. Just gravity. Come on now. Listen, listen. I've set some heavy things in my life. I've set some heavy things. And, and there's a sound it makes when it sets down. Like I, I get these big crowns and all of a sudden it goes. You know it's there. It's set. And when it's done, you're like this. Every worker set every stone in exactly the right place. And it just sat there. It just sat there. It just, just gravity. Come on now. Think about that. Say, say it with me. Say gravity. 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 Just the weight. Gravity. Just the pressure held it in place. Just the pressure. Just sitting there in silence. Under the pressure. The importance of silence. Come on. David says in another place, Psalms 46.10, he said, Be still. And know that I am God. Come on. Please. How many of us? Ooh, I feel it today. I feel it today. How many of us are still squirming? <laughs> Not just sitting. Come on. Hey, just sitting. In, hey, how many of us are thinking we're still out of place? Not set. Come on. How many of us? Even though we've, we've been through some trial, we've seen God do some things. How many of us are still saying, but God, but God, but God, what if? Over here, what, what? But, but we have to get to a place, come on now, where we are sitting in silence, trusting God, come on now, like never before. People get ready. Church, get ready for revival. God send your revival. Come on now. Come on. Hearts, get ready. Lives, get ready. Come on now. We're we, we going to get revival when we finally get ready. And, and ready means resting. Come on now. Ready means letting God be God. Amen? Let God do the things He's supposed to do. You get up and do what you're supposed to do. Amen? Read your Bible. Amen. Go to church. Tell somebody about Jesus. Be a witness, amen, of the glory and majesty of a God who is alive still today, amen, and he's inside of you. He put a piece of him inside of you, amen. There's a little piece of God inside of you, and that's big enough, amen, to blow up some circumstances in my life, amen. Uh, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. <laughs> I will be exalted in the earth. And you know who's going to do it? Me and you. Amen? The body of Christ. Amen? We're going to do it. Amen? God, God's message is, is not always heard in the earthquake. Come on, Elijah. It's not always heard in the fire. It's not always heard in the, in the storm. It's heard in the still small voice who still speaks to you today. Amen? Yes, he does. Hmm. He will often bring pressure to reveal His greatest treasure in you. Amen? Come on. Let the pressure come. I want the diamond. Amen? Let the pressure come. I want the oil. Amen? you got to press 
press, press out the oil. You got to press out the, the wine. You got to press out the good stuff. What, what, when the pressure comes, what squeezes out of you, amen? Worry, disconnect, anger, frustration, discouragement. Uh, is, that, is that of God? Hello. We got to begin to honor him with our worship. And the pastor, okay. When you feel the weight, when you feel the gravity, that's just an opportunity to lift your hands and worship. That's right. Amen. That's an opportunity to lift your hands. That's what we got to begin to do. Worship him. Amen. I feel the weight, God, but you're greater. I feel the circumstance, but I know you're going to make a way. My God's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper, right? I'll sing the song if you want. Later. <laughs> hey, go ahead, Pastor. You can sing it. Okay. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey, that is who you are. <laughs> that is who you are. Hey, even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it, <laughs> he never stopped. He never stopped working. Come on now. Y'all ain't helping me today. Well, y'all lose some sleep or something. <laughs> I, was, I was busy studying uh, last night. I got, I got to studying, and I, I, I looked at the clock, and it said 12.30 something, okay? And I said, is, is that the, the real time, or is that the other time? <laughs> I found out it was the real time. It wasn't the other time yet. And by the time I went to sleep, I was like, I, was like, I, I got about three hours of sleep. But you know what? It was worth it. I was in the presence of God. It was worth it. Amen. I don't need sleep. I'll get sleep later. Amen. I need the presence of God. Amen. I, I felt the pressure, but I knew the pressure was revealing a diamond. God was going to speak to his people like never before. It was worth it. Amen. It was worth it all. Whoa. Okay. Let me talk to you about being fit. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. It's not very good. I want to talk to you about being fit. Right? Uh, or not fit. Fit or not fit. It says in our text, it says, the stone was made ready before it was brought. Say it with me. The stone was made ready before it was brought. Woo! Just like you. Turn to your neighbor and say, just like you. It's sideways. Just like you. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear the workmen? Can you hear the workmen? 42. 42. I didn't use, they used the tape measure back then. I don't know how they did it, actually. 10 feet, 10. 15 feet. Whatever it was, I don't know what they said. And here, here's the workmen. I almost, I, I can imagine, and I, maybe they had... Uh, some sort of a bandsaw that cut stuff back then. I don't know what they did, but this is the way I imagine it in my head, and it might be wrong, but I just want you to listen for a second. Here's a, here, there's a workman with a chisel, and he's out there, and he's looking at the stone, he's going, however he measured it, I don't know, and he takes this big old hammer, I wish I had a hammer and a chisel, and he goes, dick, 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 and there's probably more than just one of them, there's, there's probably many of them in the quarry going, tink, 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 Chiseling off every imperfection in that stone so that when it gets to the right place, it will set level and flat and perfect and it won't need any grout or mortar or cosmetics to make it look right. It's just going to be in the right place. And so I want you to imagine just for a second, if God had a chisel and he brought a, a pastor, right? <laughs> and he started hammering on you with a little word and it was like, oh, that hurts, pastor. Oh, that hurts, Holy Spirit. Why do you make it hurt so much? Tink, tink, tink. I want God to remove every imperfection. Amen. Amen. I don't want to, be imperfect. I want to be 
perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen? That's what I want. I want God to be fully in charge of my life and my gift and my calling. I don't want to go through the rest of my days wondering, what if? <laughs> go ahead, God, prune a little. Go ahead, God, chip a little away. Come on, go ahead, God, smooth a little bit more over there. Amen. Go ahead, God, I want to be your man or your woman because I want to be doing what you've called me to do. Amen. Come on, Solomon. I want to be doing it. Amen. I don't want to be saying where I was or where I've been. I don't want to be bound to my experiences of what was. Come on. God, do a new thing. Say it with me. Say, God. God. Do a new thing. Do a new thing in me. Amen. And so, uh, carving away all the imperfections, fitting us, forming us, because we're lively stones. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about you. Whenever I read that, Peter, he, Peter wrote that. He says, You're a lively stone. This is what I, I imagine. Uh, God comes with a chisel and we're like, nope, not today, God. <laughs> and so he says, he says I'm, here, I'm here to give you a blessing. Well, you know, I got this other thing in mind. And so we, we're, we're all over the place. But, but really what, he, what Peter's really talking about is that the Spirit of God inside us makes us alive. Amen? Amen. That makes us alive. We got the Spirit of God in us. Amen? Oh. Ah. Not decrepit or malnourished or dysfunctional, but chosen. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Say chosen. chosen. Turn to your neighbor and look at them and say, you're chosen. I don't know if you know this about you, but you're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. Amen? You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. Amen? Come on now. And so, so, uh, so, so Ephesians uh, 2.21 says, This is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible, Ephesians 2.21. It says, in whom all the building fitly. I was going to read it, uh, I was, was going to take that word fitly and tell you what it really meant, but I like what it says there because fitly, fitly uh, reminds me that, that, that there's some work that needs to be done in me, amen? There's some work to be, and so there's some, there's some fitting that needs to go on, amen? I got to fit. You ever, you, ever been a, uh, you ever done a plumbing project? I, I do plumbing projects every once in a while. Uh, I, I'm not very good at plumbing, but I, uh, and I'll tell you why, because every time I do plumbing, I got to go to the, the hardware store at least three times. If I don't go three times, I ain't done the job. Come on. It, does, it doesn't work. I'm, I'm just changing the thing in the, in the back of the toilet, and I'm not going to get it all right on the first trip. I got to go. I get, I get home. I got everything. I got all the tools out. I turned the water off. I did everything, and everybody's got to go to the bathroom, and, and I'm like, it'll only be five minutes, and I get in there, and, the, and it just doesn't go like it's supposed to. I got to go back three times, and so that means that, means that there's some work that has to be done. Amen? Yeah. Your spirit is perfect. But your flesh, come on now. Your spirit is perfect, but your flesh. <laughs> I won't have you look at your neighbor right there. Uh, so so grow, look at this word, though. It says, uh, uh, in whom the, all the building fitly framed together. Come on, do this with your hands. Together. Together. Come on now. Can, can you just say this with me? Say, I need you. I need you. I need you. And you need me. Amen. Pastors, pa apostles, prophets, pa uh, teachers, evangelists, we need each other. Come on, it's all about us working together in the body, amen? Come on, we need each other, amen? We're fit, We're f we fit together, amen? If God called you into the house to th this morning, God brought you here because he's got something he wants to do in your life, amen? He wants, he's got something he wants to do together with all of us together. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have you do it. Turn to your neighbor right now. Just say, you know, you look like a misfit. <laughs> but I got faith. <laughs> Come on, tell them. Say, you look like a misfit, but I got faith. Come on, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. <laughs> turn, back, turn back and look at him and say, you look chiseled. Yeah. <laughs> You look chiseled, right? Come on now. <laughs> you know, uh, there, there's a story in the Bible. And I, I, I talk about this story a lot, but uh, Hannah in, in 1 Samuel uh, 1, 13, uh, she was praying at the altar. She was praying 
because she had a need. She was praying because she was stuck in a cycle. If you read the story, it says year after year, they would go to the temple. Year after year, she had to put up with the, the sarcasm and the scandalous remarks from her the, the other wife. She was a sister wife, okay? And back in the day when that was popular, you know, they used to have more than one wife. I don't think it's popular now. I know why, because one wife, they ne nearly kill a man, right? <laughs> Two wives, we wouldn't even, come on now. <laughs> so, so back then, back then they had them. So, so she had. They, there was one wife. Her, her, her husband uh, had two wives, and he said, "Ain't I better to you than ten children?" She had a good life, but she was stuck in a circumstance, and so she went to the altar. She went right to the altar, and she prayed, and she prayed so fervently that her lips would move, but no words were coming out. And Eli looked at her and he says. He says, he, he said, why are you so drunken? He, he thought she was drunk, right? And so then he, he, he said, she said, no, 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 my Lord, I'm not drunk, as you suppose. I'm not drunk. I, I am praying. I'm grieved in my heart. I got issues. Come on, say it with me. Say, I got issues, right? And she, she prayed, and, and Eli wasn't a good priest either. He was a bad priest, but he said, uh, he stood in his office. He stood in the, in his God-given place, and he said, "He said, woman, I don't know if he said woman or not. I say that because he 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 didn't know her name. Probably, he didn't know her name. He's gonna know her name later, though. Well, no, no. He was gonna know her name later. He said, "May the God of Israel grant you your request." Amen. Say say that with me. Say that with me. May the God of Israel grant your request. Come on, let's say it again. May the God of Israel grant your request. Amen? So, so there was a flow. You see how order happens? God will always work in order. Amen? He works in order. Amen? And so she left. The uh, reason I bring this up is because Hannah changed the way her face looked <laughs> that day. She didn't wait till the promise came. She just got the word from Eli. And, and she changed the countenance of her face. Her face was no longer sad. She went home, and her husband had a new wife. Come on now. Her husband had a new wife. You know, you know she was still in the cycle. She was still in the circumstance. She still didn't have a, a physical manifestation, but I'm going to tell you that it happens in the spirit realm before it'll happen in the flesh. Amen? It'll happen in the spirit realm. That's why we get, we get excited in worship, right? Because we know God has done something. That's why when you look in the mirror in the morning, you know God has called you something greater, amen? God has brought you to something bigger, amen? He wants to do something great through your life, amen? <laughs> I said it on the live on Tuesday. I said, I feel great, like Tony Tire. I feel great. That's what I said on the live. And you know what? I feel great because I know God is doing something good. Amen. <sighs> Hannah said, I've heard you. Woo. I think it went the other way too. She knew God had heard. And she was, she also heard the answer. It wasn't just a one-way conversation. Most of us are praying to God and never listening to God. And with truth. We're, we're praying and telling God all about the trouble all about the cycle, all about the circumstance, but we're not listening for what he's trying to say. Amen? It's not my way, it's his way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Not my way. It's my way or the highway, God. Well, I guess you're going to be on the highway. <laughs> I'm on the highway to hell. I was good at that. Come on. Reach it on up. I'm... Narrow is the way that leads unto life. It goes through, it goes through Jesus, amen? It goes through the throne room of God, amen? If I'm going to do it his way, I got to do it his way, amen? Not my way. Not my way at all. I don't care what I say. I don't care what you say. I care what he says, amen? You don't have to like me. That's okay. You don't have to like the message that I, that's come out of my mouth today. It's not, about, it's not about you. You know, I was praying over there in the room over there before I came out here, and the Lord said, he said, those aren't your people, they're mine. Pray. Hey, Amen? You don't belong to me, amen? You don't belong to Breakthrough Church. You belong to Jesus. 
Amen? Jesus is the Lord and King of your life. Amen? I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just your pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How often do we just stop, though? How often do we just sulk? How often do we just have all these feelings? How often are we fearful? How often are we running from what God wants to do? Tink. 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 Let me just knock running off the list. Come on. Let me just like knock fearful off the list. Let me, let me just lock, n- knock sulking off the list. Nah. Hey. Let me just knock disobedience. Oh, I don't think we can do that. You have to die first. Hi. It's true. It's true. Bailey. Come on now. Every day. Because you got flesh. You woke up with flesh today. Come on now. There's still some flesh. You're tired. Y'all tired? <laughs> 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 Y'all tired? I had Leslie. Who had, who had three hours of sleep or less? <laughs> okay, y'all beat me out there. Okay, two hours, two hours, one hour. <laughs> it's a contest now, right? Next week, we're going to come in with just one hour of sleep, okay? <laughs> we'll see what the Lord can do with us then, right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> there, 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 there are some conditions in your life that show no signs of relief. I was talking to a friend of mine last week, and he said to me, he said, he said, uh, 20 years ago, we were over at this other building, we were doing this and this and this. He said, you were saying the exact same thing you're saying right now. And he, and he, and he looked at me and he goes, what changed? I'm saying the same thing, but what's changed? I, I'm going to tell you, some conditions don't go away in five minutes. Come on. Thank you. They don't. Some circumstances aren't going to be done with a lightning bolt. Damn it. Amen? Sometimes, you get, sometimes you've been stupid. Made some decisions. Got into that thing, you know, that you shouldn't have got into. Did the thing you did. Amen? Sometimes there are some circumstances that just don't go away quick. Amen? Amen? But are you resting today? Come on now. It's been 20 years, Pastor Everett, and you're still saying the same thing. God ain't done it yet. Amen? But do you believe God is still going to do it? Yes, I do. Why, why is He going to do it? Because He said so. Amen? I believe God at His word. Amen? That does, just because it ain't manifest yet in the flesh don't mean it ain't coming. Amen? God is going to do it. Amen? I can believe what He said. Amen? If I stay in position, though, Hallelujah. Good. Hannah was trapped in words. So it was year by year. But these verses, Hannah's story reminds you of what can happen one day in the temple. Amen? One day in the temple. Say it with me. One day in the temple. Her life changed completely. Amen? It was just an ordinary day at church. Amen? This is an ordinary day. Me- measuring successful ministry is different than secular understandings. Amen? Come on. They say, easy come, easy go. Amen? Easy come. I, I, it ain't been easy. My life ain't been easy. I don't, if we could have a testimony service, I bet you you'd be shocked at how hard some people's lives have really been. Amen? And I guarantee you, I don't care how bad it is in this room, somebody somewhere has got it worse. Amen? Easy come, easy go. Amen? So, so uh, uh, can, can I just say this, though, before I move on to the close? It says, uh, most of the greatest work God will ever do in your life, He does it quietly. Who? He does it quietly. He does it in your quiet time. Come on now. In your car, 
away from wherever it is that uh, all the noise is. He does it in the quiet. He does it in the peace. He does it when you get in His presence. Amen? And so, uh, uh, without the world's attention, right? Without the world's attention, hello? Who posts their meals on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, right? We, we, got, we got Snapchat, right? Uh, look at what I'm eating. Look, what I, look, look at my word, right? Look at the, look at the, look at the, we want everybody to see the best of us, right? Except God knows the truth. Uh, amen? amen? Amen. So, so. Ninety feet by sixty feet by forty foot tall. Wasn't a very big building. I just want you to see this. Wasn't a very big building. You don't, you don't want to know why? People couldn't go into that temple. They couldn't go in. They had a courtyard on the outside. That was the house for God. Same. Come on. That was the house for God. It was a house for God. It was His house. It wasn't the people's house. That's why we needed a Savior, amen? So He could live inside of us. That's the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. God, that's why it's so powerful when it says, Emmanuel, God with us, amen? We're no longer separated by uh, the, the walls, amen? And by the borders and the boundaries, by the height, the depth, the width. But Paul says another way, oh, that you would know the love of Christ, that you know the depth of it, the width of it, the, the height of it, the, 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 the immense capacity of God to love all of the world. Je Jesus came to say, I love you right where you are. Amen? He come to be with you. Not walking beside you, but in you. Amen? The hope of glory. A amen? In Luke 3, 22, Jesus is getting baptized. He gets baptized. He comes up and there's a thunder, a thunder that happens. Bam. People said, it's thunder. And others said they heard the voice. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen? God affirmed Jesus before he ever did one miracle. <laughs> I want you to know that you have to be affirmed by him today before you can go out to the battle. Amen? If you go out to the battle without armor, you're going to die. Amen? If you go out to the battle without, without your sword, come on, without the Word of God, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. If I don't have the tools inside of me, to, the doctrine, come on, that, that, that to go out to battle, I'm going to die. Here's a song. I, I'll, I'll sing it as best I can. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Come on. Come on now. See, I need to be affirmed by that. Amen? I need to be affirmed by God knows my name. Amen? He knows my address. He knows my hopes. He knows my dreams. He knows my desires. He's going to do something powerful, not just in me, but through me. Amen? As I go, as I go, and in obedience to His call. Amen? Okay, I'm going to uh, tie, tie a knot. You ready? We're done. Almost done. We're almost done. Woo. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 7, says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah says this, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. Listen, God says four times, I, and he has words there. He says, I formed. He says, I knew. He says, I sanctified. And he says, I ordained. Four. Four is the number of love. 
God doesn't just do that for Jeremiah the prophet, though. He does it for you, too. Amen? Amen. He knows you. He knows your name. David said in another place, he knows your downfall. He knows your uprising. He knows your every part. Amen? He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly parts. He knows the things you tell everybody about. He knows the things you don't tell everybody about. He knows the things that are important to you. He knows the things that are not important to you. He understands uh, you're, flawed, uh, you're a flawed individual. He knows he's got to chisel on you a little bit. He knows he's got to work on you. But he called you. He sanctified you. He ordained you. And he brought you all the way here today. Amen? Because he wants to do something yeah. through you. Amen? And in you. Amen? And, and then Jeremiah says, in verse 6, he says, Ah, Lord, ah, Lord, why you talk, why you talk like that? He says, why you talk like that? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't speak, I can't, I can't. Sound like Moses, right? At the burning bush, Exodus, uh, Exodus 3. I can't, God, I can't talk, 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 talk. I can't, I can't, I can't. And this is what we say today. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't go and do that. I can't go and lead people. I can't go forward because of my past. I can't, I can't go <laughs> speak for you because I'm not qualified. Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. I love this part. Because it says, say not I'm a child. There's a colon right there. It says, it says, for thou shalt. That means you're going. I don't care if you're going to go kicking and screaming. I don't care if you're going to go uh, uh, rebellious and whatnot. You're going to go. I called you. I made you. I formed you. I brought you here. Now you're going to go. You're going to go. <laughs> oh, I need somebody. I need a volunteer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, go! Get off of your blessed assurance and go. Seems put in a mess. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Hmm. Thou shalt speak. I don't want to preach this. I, I'm trying to preach this. First, there's a word. Then there's an interpretation. Yes, sir. First, there's a word. God, God brings you the word. He says, here's the word. And then we interpret it. But most of the time, let me just be, be honest with you. We take the interpretation and we mold it into what we think it should sound like. And we try to live it out and it don't work. Because it's not true. Amen. There's only one truth. Amen? It says this Bible, it says, it says, woe unto the man, right? Or a person or individual that would twist the Word of God and make it their own doctrine, right? If we do that, it won't work. Amen? It won't work right. And so we have to have truth. The way, the truth, and the life is in Jesus. Amen? It's through a relationship. We gotta, we gotta spiritually discern it though. Amen? Come on now. <laughs> Jeremiah's interpretation did not change God's plan. Say it with me. Jeremiah's interpretation didn't change God's plan. Come on, say it with me. Can you agree with me right now? Just raise your hand right now. Say, I agree with that. Jeremiah's interpretation didn't change God's plan. Do you know what? Say, say it like this. Say, my interpretation doesn't change God's plans. Amen? Come on now. And so, so now, so. <laughs> Jeremiah kept saying, I can't because I'm afraid. He didn't say it like that, but just, just, just say it with me like that. Like, I can't. Say, say it with me. I can't because I'm afraid. I can't I'm afraid. It's the truth that sets you free, right? Come on. I can't because I'm afraid. But, and so, uh, it. But that was just the beginning, right? Because God was going to go anyways through him. 
Just because you're afraid in a moment doesn't mean God isn't going to use you. Amen? Just because you're afraid in a moment doesn't mean God's going to use you. I was afraid to go to the dentist the other day. I broke a tooth. A upper left molar in the back. 45. A 45 to write off. I was eating a potato chip. And I went, I said, man, that's a weak tooth. Can't even handle a potato chip. And I thought to myself, I'll just get it pulled. I'll just get it pulled. And I went to the dentist. Uh, I waited a month to go. I was too busy. <laughs> I went there. He looked at me and he said, wow, he says, uh, you're going to need a crown. And I said, yeah, right. <laughs> and he said, he said, I can pull it or I can put a crown on it. I was like, He's like, and I, I, he says, you're doing really good. Man, your age, got all your teeth. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I said, can I have a sucker? Shut <laughs> He put the crown in. It's better than my original tooth. I, I, I don't know, it just feels better. I don't know what it is. It doesn't even, I don't even notice it at all. It, it's like perfect. And I, and I thought to myself, I'm going to chew my donuts on that side now because they can't, they can't get a cavity. But yes, I'm up to those. Oh. Come on, say it with me. It's not time for excuses. That, that like, yes. It's time for obedience. And I, I want to eat. Can, I, can I just say it like I want to? God speaks a word, and then he goes like this. Jeremiah, if Jeremiah was here today, and he was like, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. God is going like this. Shh. Put that finger on his lips. Shh. I don't like your excuses. I want you to be obedient. I want you to be obedient to what I told you to do. Amen? Can, can, you, can you just do something like this? Go, go self. Put your finger over your lips and go, shh, shh, shh. Yeah. Tell yourself, be obedient. Obedience. Be obedient. Right? Spirits. How do we measure our obedience? Walking with him. Amen? Yes. Today. Decide today. Okay? I'm going to read my Bible. Say it with me. Say, Pastor, in the presence of the Lord, I want you to know, I'm going to read my Bible every day this week. Every single day. Come on. This week. Even if it's only one verse. Before I go to sleep, Amen. I'm going to read at least one verse. Amen? Amen? Now, don't, don't be a liar now. That's the case. Be obedient. Okay? Now, now, now say, this, say this with me. Say, I'm a builder. A builder. I just, it just baffles me. David could have done anything he wanted to do. He was the king. But he chose to prepare for a building he would never build. A billion dollars. Really? He prepared. What are you building? What am I building? What am I doing for God? Come on. And it looks like a bent knee. Come on now. An obedient heart and a willingness to do whatever he's called you to do. Amen? It might look like picking up the trash on the way out. It might look like holding the door for somebody. It might look like changing a tire for somebody. Come on now. It might look like a lot of things. But when God tells you to do it, do it. Amen? Say it with me. Do it. So, David made plans, saved money, created a division. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, Jeremiah spoke later on. He said, for I know, through the, through the Spirit of the Lord, he said, for I know the plans that I have. I know the thoughts that I think, I'll say, I'll read it right. I'm, 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 I'm saying it in Everett version, okay? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, right? Thoughts of peace, for I know the thoughts that I have for you. They, 
They, they are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Amen? I want, you, I want, to, I want to ask a question. How many of you have hope on the inside? Just raise your hand. That's God speaking. He gives you hope. Amen? Let him, let him have his way in your life, okay? Say it like this. Say it like this. Say, let's get a t-shirt going. Ready? It says, it's t I got a t-shirt. This is a good, good idea. Got a heart on it. And it says, God lives here. God lives here. Say it with me. Say, God lives here. He lives right here. Come on. Say it. Say it to your neighbor. Say, God lives here. Okay. So in Romans 9, 20, Romans 9, 20, it says, it says, oh man, man. Oh man, stay with me. Say, oh man. Oh man. Who art thou that repliest against God? By that against God. Shall the thing form? Yeah, I am bold. Say to, to him that formed it. That form. Why have you made me this way? Why are you made me this way? And then say this. Shh. We're just the clay, and he's the potter. Amen? Amen. Okay, amen. So, so, just a lump of clay. Just a lump of clay. Just a lump of clay. Fuck you. Woo! So, okay. Just a lump of clay. So we just ask the Lord right now, if you would stand wherever you are, let's just stand together. Let's stand together. Yeah. Just a lump of clay. Been favorite. You ever seen a, a potter? You ever seen one of them? They get the clay. They sit down on this little stool and they got this little pedal and they spin it with their feet. They take this clay. It's all kind of wet and nasty looking and they slap it on the wheel and the wheel spins centrifugal force going and they center it up on the wheel and they begin to take their hands and they begin to move it they begin to shape it they begin to expand it and make it grow up and make it into something beautiful and it, it's not just a, a a lump of clay anymore because it has purpose Amen? And the purpose is not for me to find out. It's for the designer to give. Amen? The, the potter is the one given the purpose. Amen? Why, why do we always try to tell God how it should look, how it should feel, how it should be in our life when we really need Him to, to tell us what to do? Amen? We're, we're just the clay. We're a lump of clay. The Bible says, we said, we said this verse a couple weeks ago, uh, we have a treasure in an earthen vessel. We got a treasure on the inside. It's, it's like dynamite. It's going to blow up some stuff in your life. It's going to mess some stuff up. And some of us are in the middle of the, the mess up part, right? We're in the middle of the struggle part a little bit. We're in the middle of the under, not understanding what God is doing part. But, but God is doing something anyways in us, Amen. And we can trust that if he stuck his hand up in there and started making a vase or making something else, that he's working it out of my life. Amen? And so here it is, tink, tink, tink. <laughs> a different way of looking at it, right? But, but he's pulling it up. He's stretching us. He's, he's creating something beautiful. Amen? In us. Amen? Let me just pray for us right now. And then I'm going to op open this altar up because I believe we should always respond to the Word of God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, we repent. We turn from our ways. We're asking, Lord, that you would come into our heart Come and be the Lord of our life. Forgive us for everything that we've ever done.
forgive us for not being obedient to you and following you in every area of our life. Touch us now, God. Fill us now, God, with your Spirit. Work in us. Make us. Mold us. Create in us a clean heart. Let your Holy Spirit come and make a home inside of us. Open our ears. Open our eyes so that we can see and hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm just going to pray for you. Just stay right there. Just hold your hands out in front of you if you would. I'm just going to pray because I want to, I want to bind the devil a little bit here. I just feel, a, I feel something, so I'm going to pray about it. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you come into this room right now. You see your people. Father, we just take authority right now over every devil, over every demon that has come to block the blessing of God in our life, that has come to hinder uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, that has come to destroy and damage our families. Father, we break the hold of the enemy right now. We come out of agreement. We come out of covenant with every cycle in our life that is not of you. Every cycle of des despair, every cycle of depression, every cycle of uh, uh, of of, of, of self-pity. We come out of agreement right now. And Father, we heard the word today. We heard your word today. And Father, we, we say, today is the day of my salvation. This is the day I will rejoice. This is the day I will lift my hands and worship you because this is the day you have set me free. I will no longer be slave to sin. I will no longer... <laughs> be in covenant relationship with the, the devil himself. I break it right now in Jesus' name off of the families in this church. Father, we will reproduce. We will reproduce not because we say so, but because we are attached to the source, to the vine. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, let fruit come out from this message, from this day forward. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray. In John chapter 4, there was an extraordinary woman. She came out. She came out to a well where Jesus was sitting. She came out to a well. Jesus was waiting for her. He knew she was coming. Matter of fact, he said, I got to go through Samaria. And he sent the disciples away to get food. And he sat down on a well and he waited for her. She came in and she came with a water pot because she was thirst, thirsty. She came with natural circumstances. And she had a conversation with Jesus. And she believed Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, for the very reason, this only reason, because he told me everything that I ever did. And that was enough for her to go back to the city and be a witness. And she became the, the world's first evangelist, a lady. <clears throat> she went back and told the whole town, look what the Lord has done. Amen? An extraordinary woman gave an example to all of us so that we can be extraordinary also. But we have to open our mouth. Amen? The devil tries to keep you shut up. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Amen? Open your mouth and praise Him because He's greater than whatever it is you're going through. Amen? He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger than this room. Come on, say it with me. He's bigger than this room. He's bigger than my body. Come on now. He's bigger than my mind. Come on now. He's bigger than my circumstances. Amen? 
And so I release right now the power of the Holy Spirit to go and do amazing things in your life, in your families. Come on, all over the world right now. There's people from all over. There's someone from the Philippines today that was tuned in. And I just bless, bless the Philippines. Amen. Bless every country that's watching right now. Bless all the folks that have tuned in online. And I ask that the, Lord, the Holy Spirit would go. Amen. And do, do a great and mighty work in your life. Let the doctrine of your heart and mind be, 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 be changed today to the truth. Amen. Let the truth, let the truth reign in your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I want to open the altar. Uh, those that are online, we want to say, God bless you. We, we love you. Uh, uh, but if you're in the house, respond to the word of God. Come up here and slap that altar. Tell, tell the devil that's enough is enough. Tell him you can't be here anymore. Tell him I got, uh, I got the truth now. I'm armed with the truth. I got the sword in my hand. I'm going to go and do something great for God because he called me. He sanctified. He ordained me. He set me in this place. This is the, this is the place where you fit. Amen? Amen. God bless you.